our weekend, our week two update video for our Business 630 course. Good morning, everybody. This is Professor Hasse. It's uh, Saturday morning, uh, February 5th. I'm a, as usual, I'm a little late with my videos and I apologize. But this is our week two update video, just going over a couple of key points from our work this week. Uh, you all are working on case number one this week. I've answered some questions on it. Uh, sounds like you're all doing pretty well on that. Remember the, the key to this case is two things. Uh, number one, just doing some basic uh, finance calculations, uh, determining uh, uh, the credit rating of your chosen company, uh, determining the required rate of return on, on an equity investment for your for your company based on the market indicators given and using the capital asset pricing model. And then finally, uh, determining the capital structure of your company by taking a percent of debt to assets and percent, a percent of equity to assets that should total 100% equaling your capital structure of your company. Once you do those calculations, you'll do the second part of the uh, case, which is your interpretation and, and finding out of other risk associated with your company, environmental, organizational, uh, what other risks are going, are doing, are, are there for your company? And one of the key indicators that you could use on giving you some hints of the risk of the company is a SWOT analysis. If you ever, probably many of you know the SWOT analysis is a statement or an analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to a company. Well, definitely weaknesses and threats are, are key risk issues with a company. Now you might say, where in the hell am I going to find uh, my SWOT analysis? Well, we have a database at the University of Laverne Library that you can use and find uh, a company's financial indicators and information. And in that information is a SWOT analysis of a particular company. Here's that website and how to find that information by this short brief video. Here's our Laverne website, which many of you are familiar with. If you go to the Laverne website and click on Academics and go to the Wilson Library, you have the entrance into our library website. Now, as online students or any student of the University of Laverne, you have access to all the information in the library. Now, for MBA students like yourselves who have to do research and a lot of real-world study and analysis, you should be familiar with the databases. So if you click on databases here in the library website, you will bring up all the different databases at the library and you want to concentrate on, since this is a finance class, finance. And as you can see, this is the databases for finance. Before I get to that, this woman right here, her name is Linda Gordon. Her task is specifically assigned to our business online class to help our students with any help they need with library resources. You can email Linda, you can call her, you can leave a message, she will get back to you. If you're having trouble with writing a paper in APA format, if you're having trouble locating information at the library website, call on Linda and she will help you. She is specifically assigned to our program, Linda Gordon. And the database that we're going to be working with in our class, and maybe for all of your MBA classes, is called D&B Hoover's. It's the most popular database for finance where all American corporations are listed. If you remember in your case study, if you've read it yet, and I will talk about this in a separate video, you are asked to locate the financial information from a company that you select. The financial inf information is from the 10K financial report of that corporation. D&B Hoover's database is a place where all that 10K information is collected. So if I click on D&B Hoover's, up will come a sign-in page where you as a student have to log in just like me as a faculty member. So you would type in your last name and you would type in your Laverne ID number. I hope you know your Laverne ID number. If you don't, it, it's on your 
It's on your registration forms. It's probably in your Blackboard site. But once you type that in, you hit submit. And now you're in the D&B Hoover's website database. You type in the name of the company you're looking for. Let's say I'm going to pick Apple Computer. And I'll bring up anything associated with Apple. Apple Incorporated is the company we want, Apple Computer. And it brings up everything you always wanted to know about Apple but were afraid to ask. This is great. It helps you with so many things. It gives you the basics of the company. It gives you a link to their website, their headquarters, the number of employees. It talks about the business, the industry they're in, company highlights, their lead man management team, articles and information about the company, some financial ratios and snap snapshots of the stock. But more importantly for us, it also gives the financial data downloaded from the company's 10K reporting. If you remember, 10Ks are SEC filings to the government, publicly audited financial statements of the company. So if I click on income statements, annual, that's what we're concerned about, the annual results, you can see one, two, three years of their financial performance in an income statement. You can download this to an Excel file. You can print it out. All kinds of information regarding their income statement. Here's their balance sheet on an annualized basis going back three years. Here's their cash flow statement. So one of the great things about this database is you don't have to search all around the internet. You don't have to go to the company's website and try to figure out how they're doing it. In one area, you can locate uh, lots of data on corporate America. In addition to just the financial information, it gives you information about the company's description, what they do, their history, which I think is kind of important to your case number one, one of the questions I ask. Their products and operations, where they work, where they do most of their business, and their products. A SWOT analysis, a company SWOT analysis of Apple that's done by the investment community. News, articles, and it's also who are their competitors a list of their competitors and their various types of businesses that compete with Apple Computer. Their annual reports. You can download their SEC filings. You can download and then also a stock report talking about the history of the stock over the last many years. So in other words, this is one place you can go and get financial data for your companies in your analysis. You probably could use this in other classes too, but throughout our course, Business 635, you will be using this to gather your data because it's at the Wilson Library site. It's one place where you know where the information is. You have control over the data. You can download the data. It's made and developed for you, the student, in the MBA program. So that's uh, part of the research that you will be using this class, and I hope this helps you Kind of track it down. Okay, that was a, a couple year old video uh, by me to saying the class of Business 635, which is now Business 630, which you have. And if you note the dates on the financial statements are a little old, but it gives you all the general idea and how to go about going to that DNB Hoover's database at the Wilson Library. Please take advantage of that. It can help you immensely and also can help you forget about going to school. It can help you doing in, 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 investment information or information about companies just being a uh, an investor or a, a citizen. You might even want to look up the company you work for and see what they're all about. So that's a great database that you have for uh, that's part of your being a Laverne student. You have access to that database while you're involved with the University of Laverne which means a long time, because even when you're an alumni, you can use that database. Okay, so that's part one of our weekend, our week uh, and our week two update today. We'll just show you where to get data and how to go about finding data for your variety of cases that you'll be doing throughout this course. Secondly, I wanna just go over a couple of definitions of the time value of money and capital financing. Uh, it's located, if you go to week two, 
there's a spreadsheet there under week class two lecture notes. And it kind of just highlights some of the calculations. And I know when speaking with many of you in our professor meetings the past week, some of you are concerned about doing calculations and, and a little bit uh, apprehensive about do, working on spreadsheets. Well, again, you don't have to be. It's Everything is provided for you. You can do this rather easily. It's very simple, uh, simple procedures to, to get you to understand and to be able to use data in the hell in your work. So let's bring up this spreadsheet in our week two notes. Here it is. And one of the one of the things we'll be using a lot in this class is looking at future cash flow or future receipts of of money and relationship to what it's what's going on today. And it's called the time value of money or the future value of money discounted to its present value. Here's an example of that, where we make an investment of $100,000 over a 10 year period of time. That's the depreciable life of the $100,000 investment in the asset. Over the course of the depreciable life of this asset, as you can see, it's going to generate $140,000 of cash flow, $5,000, then 10, then 15, then $20,000 per year in cash flow. What is cash flow? We'll talk about that more next in the next couple of weeks, but cash flow is the net income generated by the asset investment, revenue minus expenses, all right? Taking into account that the taxes you have to pay, but then from that net, net income, adding back depreciation, adding back any salvage or scrap value in the final year of the investment, and adding back any working capital return on the investment. That all accumulates to cash flow. And we'll talk more about that in another couple of weeks. But let's say this is the concept of time value of money. We're making an investment of $100,000 today, but we're generating in the future $140,000. Now on paper or just looking at it, you go, well, that's a pretty good investment. We're spending $100,000 today and we're getting back $140,000 in over 10 years. Yeah, but what did it cost us to get the $100,000 today to invest in the asset? Remember that one of the max, one of the rules of finance is how you are going to finance an investment in an asset. Well, there's three ways as we've talked about. Borrowing of money, issuing equity, using your profits. All three of those areas have a cost. Well, let's say, and we'll learn more about calculating those costs. You already know about the cost of equity from case number one, but we'll talk more about that later. But let's say this, it costs this company 4% interest to get this $100,000. So what we need to do then is to discount or take this $140,000 over the 10 year depreciable life. And what is its value today at 4% interest cost? In other words, it's the discounted cash flow value today. So what we're going to do is take the present value of this cash flow over 10 years and discount it back to today's value at a cost of 4%. Formulas. Function. And you'll see a function box come up. Go to the category financial and look for the calculation or the calculation model, I guess you could call it, called NPV. There it is right there, net present value. Net present value returns the net present value of an investment based on a discount rate and a series of future payments over the period of time. So we're spending $100,000 today. We're investing over, we're getting a return of $140,000 over 10 years at a cost of 4%. So we select the NPV function and we type in 4% as our cost. And then for the values over the 10 years, all we have to do is paint from year one through year 10. See what I did there? I just went from cell D7 to M7, put it in right into my calculation. And now automatically this 
function calculates that $140,000 received over 10 years at 4% discount, what is its value? $108,427. So looking at it in the context of today's value, that $140,000 is actually worth $108,427, taking into account the cost of money of 4%. The net present value of that is taking the discounted cash flow and subtracting out the investment. And this, this asset is profitable with a net present value of $8,427. Yes, we're earning 140,000 over the future, but in today's value, taking a look at comparison to the investment, we're making a little bit over $8,400, taking into account the cost of the money. So it's a profitable investment. Every company in the world does this to project out their return on investment for an asset. We'll talk more about this in future weeks, but that's what we mean by the time value of money discussed in chapter four. Another example I wanna use here is it has to do with bonds in chapter five, all right? Bonds, what is a bond? A bond is the main source of debt investment for a corporation. Most corporations issue bonds. Yes, they do borrow from banks. They take out bank loans, bank notes, lines of credit, but banks are limited to the amount of lending they can give to a major large corporation because of capital reserve requirements. Remember the Federal Reserve and the banking regulations of the United States say a bank can only lend out a certain amount of money to customers and they must keep a percentage of their money in-house to meet the needs of the depositors that put money into their bank. So banks can only lend out a certain amount of their capital. So if you, if you need millions or hundreds of millions of dollars to finance a corporation investment, a company needs to go either put together a banking package with multiple banks, and don't, don't take any offense on this, but trying to deal with one banker is a biggest has, uh, is a hassle. Dealing with multiple bankers, pfft, Forget it. So how do companies get around this form of financing? They issue bonds in the bond market. They go to the public markets, hire an investment banking firm to represent them, put together a perspective of what they're planning on, on borrowing and using the money for, and then go out to insurance companies, pension funds, individuals like you and I, and have them lend them their money. Corporate bonds are in document, uh, are in are in $1,000 increments. You can, so if you go to Wells Fargo on Monday morning and say, hey, I want to buy a bond. Well, all right, here, where's your $1,000? Here's your $1,000. And you can buy one corporate bond. A corporate bond has a principal in lots of $1,000. It has a rate. It's called a coupon rate. Sometimes it's in an annual percentage. Sometimes it's in a semi-annual percentage. But that's how much interest the company will pay you during the life of the bond. And then the maturity value of the bond is when the bond is due. So let's say here's a company that issues a bond. It's called the Renfro, Renfro Rentals Company. And they go out and borrow $1,000 from the public. We'll keep this simple. The coupon rate is on, on the bond is 10%. How that coupon rate is set by the credit risk of the company. The investment banking firms, a credit analysis firm like Standard & Poor's, determine what you found the credit rating of your company and what one of the case one work. The credit rating determines what the risk of the company is to borrow money and that sets the interest rate in the market. If it's a 10% rate semi-annually, that means it's a 5% per period bond. So in every six months, you get 50 bucks. 5% or $100 a year, 10%. So if I lend my, this company Renfro Rentals $1,000 and they give me an interest rate of 10% compounded or 10% semi-annually, that means every year, every six months, Renfro will send me a check for 50 bucks. And then at the maturity, in this case, this bond is due in two years. In two years, Renfro will send me a check 
for the thousand dollars. So I get a hundred dollars a year for two years plus the thousand dollars back. That's my investment. And that's what the company has to pay you during the life of the bond. Interest payments and then the principal at maturity. Okay, cool. But what happens before the two years go out that I have to, uh, I need the money. I can't wait for the two years maturity. I want to sell my bond now. So I'm going to go to the bond market and sell my bond to anybody interested. So let's say after one year, I'm going to sell my bond in a market that now says the market says eight and a half percent is the risk in the market for this bond today. In other words, the interest rate has changed. Yes, this bond the company is still paying me 10 percent a year. But now if this company would go out into the bond market and issue a new one thousand dollar bond, their interest rate would drop to eight point five percent or four and a quarter percent semi-annually. So now if I go to the bond market and say, hey, Mr. Bond Broker, I've had this bond for a year. I've gotten two payments of $50. Now I want to sell it in the market. What price can I get for this $1,000 bond? In other words, what is the present value of a 10% bond in an 8.5% market with two periods remaining one year? formula, function, financial. And now I go to not net present value where I had a series of cash flows, but I go to present value, PV. There it is right there, PV. Returns the present value of an investment. The total that is a series of future payments is worth now. So right now we're looking for a an interest the interest rate in the market is now four and a quarter percent. How many periods remain? Two. Remember, I've got this is one year, it's a two-year bond. So I have two coupon payments remaining. The coupon payments are being paid me at $50 a piece. Notice I type in negative 50. I'll explain that in a minute. And the future value, what I'm going to get at the end of the next year at maturity is $1,000. That's the amount of the bond. So if I went to the market and asked to, be, to, sell, or to sell my bond after a year in a market of 8%, 8.5%, this bond would be worth a present value of $1,114.10. I would, if I would sell it in the market now, I'd make a capital gain of $14.10. Plus, I've already received my $100 in coupon payments for the first year. So I really would make $114.10 after an investment of $1,000. Not bad. In other words, interest rates in the market have gone down. The price of or the value of this 10% bond is gone up. Interest rates go down, values go up. What does that mean? It means that somebody's gonna have to pay me more than $1,000 to get those $50 semi-annual payments in a market of eight and a half percent. Because if this, if I just want to pay a thousand, then you're only gonna get $85 a year instead of the hundred. That's why this bond is more valuable the interest rate is driving the value of the bond because it's lower than the coupon rate of the original bond. Now let's take a look at another example when the interest rate goes up to 12 and a half percent after one year or six and a quarter percent per period. In other words, it's gone up here, it's gone down in this example, now it's gonna go up. What is the value of that bond in this scenario? Formula, function, financial, present value. Now the interest rate per period is six and a quarter percent. Still two periods remain, still getting $50 payments, and the future value is still $1,000. Now, 
why do I put in negative sign? Because it says that that money is going out and it'll convert that into a positive number. If I just put $50 and $1,000, it'll give me a negative number, which is still the right number, but it sometimes confuses people due to the nature of it being in brackets or a negative number. So I just type in minus 50, minus 1,000, and I get $977.16. So now this bond is being lower in value. Interest rates have gone up higher than the coupon. <clears throat> Thus the bond value has decreased. It's called a discount. When a bond value goes up, it's called a premium. When a bond value goes down, it's called a discount. Now, we're not going to, you're not going to have to do too many calculations understand doing this, but here's the important part. And this has to do with what's going on in the world around us today. We're in inflationary times. Just yesterday, it was announced that we have the highest inflation in 40 years in this country. What does it, high inflation mean? Higher interest rates. So if I owned bonds today and interest rates are going up, what does that mean? It means that I'm losing value on my investments, my assets. Because if I would sell them in the market today, I wouldn't get as much for them. And that's why inflation scares a lot of people because it reduces the value of existing assets that you have. So that's an important part of that. So those are the key lecture points of our second week talk about capital valuation, the value of debt in increasing interest rates, the future, the present value of a future value, future series of payments called the net present value analysis, all very important that we'll use a lot throughout this class. So good luck with case number one this week. And we'll see you in our lecture video for week three on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Rams 31, Cincinnati 21. Thank you. Adios.